And thank you so much for joining us for CBN News Watch. I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead today, a tragic end to a tourist trip overseas. What we're learning about a bus crash in Bulgaria. And it's all hypothetical how a run for governor might go for a famous actor. Plus, a driver plows his SUV into a Christmas parade. See what we've learned about the circumstances leading up to the event. A booster for the holidays. We are seeing more breakthrough infections. The latest concern for health experts. God gives us free will. Why a woman says she chose to come back to earth after seeing heaven. This is CBN News Watch. We begin this half hour with this. A tourist bus carrying people home crashed and caught fire in western Bulgaria this morning. At least 45 people lost their lives. Children were among the victims. Officials believe the bus hit a highway guardrail, crashed and caught fire. An investigation is still underway. We're learning more about the Wisconsin Christmas parade that turned deadly when an SUV plowed into a crowd, killing five and injuring at least 50. 18 of those were children. The driver of that SUV is in custody, facing five intentional homicide charges and is set to appear in court today. CBN's Jenna Browder is on this story. The community of Waukesha, Wisconsin, is mourning the loss of fellow citizens, family and friends. Last night, gathering for a prayer vigil not far from the scene of the tragedy. Five dead, at least 48 injured, including 18 children, some still fighting for their lives. There was just like so many like bodies in the road. Um, and then I saw them like start to pick them up and they were like little kids. I literally saw roughly 10 people bounce off of that car and, and you could hear thud, 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 thud as he drove through that. Part of the chaos was captured on the city's live stream of the parade and various cell phone videos. One showing a child dancing in the street as the SUV speeds by. And we're learning more about the victims. Three of those killed were part of the Milwaukee Dancing Grannies, a marching and dancing group of grandmothers that's been around for nearly 40 years. Brian Wallace says he was with one of them in her final moments. She died in my arms. The community still reeling. We are hurting, we are angry, we are sad, we are Waukesha strong. 39-year-old Daryl Brooks is in custody, facing five counts of first-degree intentional homicide. Police say Brooks had just left the scene of a domestic dispute but was not being pursued. Nope. And he has a long rap sheet charged with 16 crimes since 1999. Earlier this month, he was accused of running over the mother of his child. And that's raising questions and a renewed call to give judges more power to set higher bails. Republicans calling it an example of a broken legal system. If convicted, Brooks could face life in prison. Jenna Browder, CBN News. Israeli police are still on high alert after the second terrorist attack in Jerusalem's old city within a week. Sunday, a Hamas terrorist murdered 26-year-old South African immigrant Eli Kay and wounded three others before police shot and killed that gunman. The attack took place near the entrance to the Temple Mount. Police say a well-known Hamas preacher from East Jerusalem carried out the attack. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett warned of other possible attacks. I've directed the security forces to prepare and be alert. I'm also concerned about copycat attacks. We need to be on heightened alert and prevent any future attacks. Hamas claimed responsibility for the attack and called it an heroic operation. In Jerusalem, Shafat refugee camp, hundreds of Hamas supporters praised the terrorists. And in Gaza, Hamas members reportedly gave out candy to celebrate the attack. On Friday, Britain's Prime Minister Boris Johnson declared Hamas's political and military wings as terrorist organizations. Republicans are pushing back against the nomination of Gigi Sohn to lead the Federal Commission, Communications Commission, insisting Sohn wants to silence conservative voices. CBN News senior Washington correspondent Tara Mergener has more. The White House calls Gigi Sohn a leading advocate for open and affordable communications networks that promote democracy. Conservative opposition, however, may delay acting on the nomination and keep the panel from having a Democrat majority. While the White House states Gigi has worked to defend and preserve the fundamental competition and innovation policies that have made broadband internet access more ubiquitous, competitive, affordable, open, and and protect
protective of user privacy, critics call President Biden's FCC nomination his most dangerous yet. Her name is Gigi Sohn. How petrified should every American be about her nomination? The FCC wields extensive authority over broadband providers, wireless companies, and broadcasters. Sohn, a communications attorney, is one of two progressive picks for the agency and a longtime supporter of net neutrality. 96% of residential high-speed broadband internet lines in this country are owned either by a cable company or a telephone company. She previously served under Barack Obama as an architect of the commission's 2015 net neutrality order, gutted by a Republican-led FCC two years later. Now everybody likes net neutrality, but what they don't like is the FCC's ability to be a referee on the field and make sure that networks are fast, fair, and open. She's also hinted at deploying the agency's regulatory power to censor conservative media and revive a version of its mooted fairness doctrine. Republicans, including Senator Lindsey Graham, blasting the nomination on Twitter. GOP critics also point to numerous statements they say are red flags she'll censor conservative media, including this one. For all my concerns about Facebook, I believe that Fox News has had the most negative impact on our democracy. It's state-sponsored propaganda, with few, if any, opposing viewpoints. And after Tribune Broadcasting abandoned its merger with right-leaning Sinclair Broadcast Group in 2018, she said, Today is a good day for every American who believes that diversity of voices in the media is better for our democracy and that the FCC should look at whether Sinclair is qualified to be a broadcast licensee at all. She will go after the licenses of Fox News, of Sinclair, of anybody who disagrees with the Biden administration. Currently, the FCC is deadlocked in a partisan 2-2 tie, rendering it politically hamstrung. Sohn's nomination comes alongside that of FCC acting chair Jessica Rosenworcel, their confirmations would help President Biden spend billions to expand high-speed broadband in his infrastructure package. In Washington, I'm Tara Mergener, CBN News. The demand for booster shots is on the rise as Americans prepare to gather with friends and family this holiday season. 70% of Americans say they plan to spend the holidays with family and friends from outside of their home. Friday, the CDC gave the green light for boosters for all adults of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine six months after their second dose. But health officials are still concerned about getting the unvaccinated vaccinated, especially with a recent surge. We are seeing more breakthrough infections. That is expected to increase uh, in the coming months because of the winter weather. Right now, 34 states are seeing a surge in new infections. Coming up, one Hollywood A-lister entering politics from speculation to what if and what voters polled on the hypothetical think about it. We've got the story for you coming up next. Welcome back to CBN News Watch. If Matthew McConaughey ran for Texas governor, he might just win. That is according to a recent poll about a hypothetical run by the actor. Here now with more is Faith Wire's Billy Hallowell. So, Billy, to be clear, McConaughey has not has not said he is running for governor, but he has mentioned it. He has mentioned it. He has said earlier this year that he'd be a fool not to consider it, uh, but he has not committed to it. There is no indication that he will definitely do it. And let's remember he was promoting a book at the time, right? So he was out there promoting his book and talking and saying, look, you know, I have to consider this. I have no idea if I'll do it. I'd be a fool not to. Now tell us about this hypothetical poll by the University of Texas and the Dallas Morning News. This is a fascinating poll because they've done a number of them, but this was the first one where you had Beto O'Rourke in the mix too. And what essentially happened in this poll, and this is of 1,100 voters um, out in Texas, registered voters, it was basically found that both candidates, both the current sitting governor, Greg Abbott, and Beto O'Rourke would lose to Matthew McConaughey if an election were held today. And the numbers are really fascinating. It's 43% choosing Matthew McConaughey in a hypothetical head-to-head -head with Greg Abbott 
and 35 percent choosing the governor. And it was an even wider range. Matthew McConaughey gets 49 percent up against Beto and Beto only gets 27 percent in that hypothetical. That's that's pretty noteworthy. Indeed it is. So the public is really interested in seeing him run. He has commented on the poll. And has he commented on the poll, I want to say? He has not commented on the poll yet. One of the interesting things, too, is that 40 percent of the public, when you ask them, do you want to see him run in Texas, four out of 10 Texans say yes, and 33 percent say no. And then there's a wide swath of people, you know, 20 percent plus who aren't sure, who don't really care. But 40 percent, that's again, it's a pretty stunning statistic. Any bets here? You know, I'm guessing he doesn't run. But then again, look, we <laughs> president, former President Donald Trump, we, nobody thought he would run for years. He ran. You go back to Ronald Reagan. There's a long history here of people in Hollywood who move over into politics and also a public uh, that is very exhausted from politics looking for other options. So my bet is he doesn't run. But I do think there's definite intrigue, and I understand why. Indeed. Thank you so much. I want to remind you that, of course, you can catch more at faithwire.com. Thank you for bringing us uh, this. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Still ahead, a woman died and went to heaven. The beautiful sight she describes. But why did she choose to come back to earth? We've got the answer for you when we come back. Stay with us. A woman says she's di she died and went to heaven. Now she's back on earth sharing with others the beautiful things she saw. Charlene Aaron and Wendy Griffith spoke with Charlotte Holmes on the prayer link. Well, the last time you were with us, Charlotte, you shared about what happened to you when your heart stopped while you were in the hospital last year. And for those who may have missed that interview, tell us what happened to you. Um, I had been hooked up. My blood pressure was extremely high. Uh, my heart doctor put me in the hospital. Uh, blood pressure was 234 over 134. Um, all of a sudden, they had come in and given me a little sponge bath and was hooking me up to the monitors. My husband told me that I all of a sudden fell over in bed. My eyes were wide open. Uh, within a t short time frame, I come above my body. And I looked down and I could see my husband, I could see the doctors, the nurses, I could see him doing chest compressions on me. And for 11 minutes, I didn't breathe. But in a blink of an eye, I smelt the flowers. I heard the singing. I opened my eyes. I knew that I was in heaven. I see no. You, you knew that you were in heaven. How did you know? Tell us what did you see? Tell us, you know, what did, tell us more about, you know, the colors and what you smelled. The first thing was I smelt flowers. Now, I love flowers, but these were like no flowers that is on this earth. Uh, the smell. And then I heard music, and I love music, but there is no music like the angels and people praising God. When I opened my eyes, the beauty was um, indescribable. The colors were vibrant, the trees, the, the uh, grass, the flowers, the oceans, the, the everything was wonderful. And I, the sky even, I've never seen the Northern Lights, but I've seen them on TV. And that's exactly what it was. And then I seen angels, um, you see, in a short period of time, because there's, it's eternity in heaven, there's no time frame. God let me just visually see so much. And then I turned and I looked. And when I did, I see the golden gates. I seen them. They were gold. I seen the streets of gold. Um, I wow. seen my family. Charlotte, you, you mentioned that you, you saw friends and family who had passed away you know, years before, including a baby that you had miscarried, you know, years before. And a lot of people are really interested to hear about that. Tell us more about that. As I looked upon my mother and my dad and my sister and family, um, I seen this infant at my mom and dad's feet. Um, Danny and I had had a daughter and then about, uh, oh, about, she was about almost two years old. Well, I was pregnant again, and I miscarried at five and a half months. Well, back then, they didn't let you hold your baby. They didn't let you bury your baby. So there was this baby that's this big, and they said, uh, Charlotte, it's a, it's a boy. 
Well, I um, went through depression. If people don't believe in depression, then I'm glad you don't because you've never been through it then. Um, but I missed, I wanted that baby. So as I looked upon this infant at my mom and dad's feet, I couldn't understand who that was. I knew everybody else because it says in the Bible, we will be known as we were known. Um, but I couldn't realize who that was. And God just told me, he said, that's your child. Mm. And I said, but how, mm. how can my child that was, I was five and a half months be now a toddler. And he explained that they continue to grow in heaven but there's no time, so it's eternity. So 40-some years later, my child, our child, was a toddler. Wow, wow, I can't imagine how you felt. That's amazing. Well, at one point, Charlotte, you looked back at your husband and family on earth, and they were crying. Uh, God gave you the choice to stay or return to earth. Why did you decide to return? Uh, at that moment... I, when I looked back, I could see them crying. I have a granddaughter that's 20, a grandson that's 22. And I thought, I just want to see them get married. I want to be sure they're equally yoked. I want to be sure that my granddaughter has a husband that will lay his hands on her and pray for her, help her through this life. And the same with my grandson. And maybe it's, a, I think it's a mother's instinct and people said, why would you do that? And I said, I really can't answer that. But you see, I think my life had already been ordained from the day I was born because I almost died the day I was born. Mm. And due to the wow. things and circumstances that went through my life, I think it was already ordained. God knew. He knew when he gave me a choice that I was going to go back. He knew Amen. that I couldn't quit talking about it, that I had to share Amen. what the church was. For more on this, you can catch the prayer link on CBN News Channel or at the CBN News app. On the CBN News Channel, it begins at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time this evening. Coming up, the latest movie about the life of beloved Christian author C.S. Lewis continues on the big screen. We'll give you the story behind the extension when we come back. Delari was cooking when the edge of her sari caught on fire. Her back and legs were severely burned. After that, I faced a lot of difficulties. I couldn't walk, my legs had shrunk, and the skin peeled off. I gave up all hope. Delari needed surgery, but her family couldn't afford it. Then the family heard about a hospital that partners with Operation Blessing. They reached out to us, and we paid for Delari's multiple surgeries. I can walk normally without any pain. I will be forever grateful to everyone who helped me get my surgery. CBN Partners are changing lives. Your help brings food, water, and joy to families. Children learn, play, laugh, and smile again because you care. Partner with CBN. Please call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com. C.S. Lewis went from atheist to the most beloved Christian writer of the century. It's also the subject of the film, The Most Reluctant Convert, by popular demand. Its run has been extended, and the film star, Max McLean, is with us in Studio 5. There's one story that's not so well known. It's my story. And who better to tell it than me? So, Max, what is it about C.S. Lewis that's drawn you to this character? I've been living with Lewis for, oh, good night, 45 years, I think. Cheers. I'm an adult convert to Christianity, and uh, Lewis uh, captured my imagination immediately. I love the smell of bunting. And I was undone. Lewis has been uh, a bottomless well of nourishment and, and spiritual guidance uh, ever since. How could a mere man be called a great moral teacher and say the sort of things Jesus said? Such as? What is it about the most reluctant convert that um, has captured people's attention so much so its run has been extended? I, I think pe people are really interested in Christianity or in spirituality at a very serious level, but they don't know how to talk about it. And so Lewis allows them to think deeply about it. I mean, he was born into the into the faith and and then 
He had some terrible experiences growing up. He, he came to the conclusion that either there's no God behind the universe, a God who's indifferent to good and evil, or worse, an evil God. Either there's no God behind the universe, a God indifferent to good and evil, or worse, an evil God. So, so he was, you know, he was in a paradoxical position. And I think a lot of people are exploring those very same questions. Do you believe that logic and reason bring forth indisputable truth? I do. But beyond that, he realized that he was accountable to God in a very deep way, the God who created him. Do you see Max in CS since you've lived with, with CS so I long? I see, I, I mean, I think the it might be a little bit more CS in Max. Ah. You know, he, he's really shown me the importance of the intellect, but not the intellect alone, but really integrated with the spirit and the emotion. For the first time, I examined myself with a serious practical purpose. How do you think he would feel about the celebration of the work that he left behind? I do hope that people that love him see a lot of him in our movie. He's become a, a, a wonderful spiritual guide, not just to me, but to millions of people. And I do think uh, that's one of the reasons why the film resonates so much. That night, as I read Fantasties, my imagination was baptized. The rest of me took a little longer. The movie is doing so well at the box office. It's been extended now through November 25th. You can go to cslewismovie.com to see locations and times in your area. Time now for your Tuesday Tweetable. I pray this message will bless you and you will bless others by posting, tagging, tweeting, and sharing with those in your circle. There is no change in your comfort zone. It's time to get comfortable being uncomfortable. That is the only place to find true success. With that word, I encourage you to make today a terrific Tuesday and be sure to have yourself a wonderful rest of the week. That is going to do it for this edition of CBN Newswatch. I want to remind you, you can always find more of our programs on the CBN News channel at any time. You can also find them online at CBNNews.com. We'd love to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can email us. The address is right there at the bottom of your screen, newswatch at CBN.com. You can also reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hope you'll join us again right back here, same time tomorrow. We'll see you here. Thanks for watching, everybody.